Uh, every station will have an RP and a double check. You'll have a test kit. So we got in here, we'll have Midwest 845, five valve test kit. Um, on this one, again, don't memorize it by color, but it'll be the same for all three days. Your high side hose is red, your low side hose is blue, your bypass hose is yellow, and your control valves are color coordinated. So you get your high side control valve, low side control valve, bypass control valve, and then up at the top of each chamber, you have your bleed valves. So low side bleed, high side bleed. You'll have that bleed hose, secure it. You got binder clips, just feed it through. Don't pinch it off, but feed it through, push down the back, and that'll keep it in the trough, keep it from getting wet. All right, you'll also have a test report. Again, use this from the beginning, so you get used to filling it out as you go, building up that repetition, um, and then knowing when to pull a number accurately and get it on the test report. All right, uh, they're all laminated. You got a grease pencil, best way to fill it out when you're done. Dry paper towel, wipe it, start again. Good luck keeping it dry, but dry paper towel takes it off best. Don't worry about filling out information. We'll worry about that um, on Friday. Just start working through the test procedure. Top set of five boxes is the RP, so that's what we're gonna start today. It's filled out for one uh, device, so there's one pass or fail box. You fill out either the RP or the double check. We'll start with the RP today. Here's your pass or fail box. All right. <coughs> So again, the entire uh, procedure is one big sequence. That sequence will begin with all of your test kit valves in the closed position. So go through and show me that they're all closed to begin with. All right, we're gonna start with the RP. We'll get to the double check tomorrow. So first thing we need to do is establish direction of flow. So I got a hose on one side and a cap on the other. If you need your help with direction of flow, raise your hand and I'll help you. Now, everything out here goes left to right, okay? When you get to the field, just know some of them will go right to left, so make sure you hook up correctly. But establish direction of flow, look for that flow indicator arrow. Uh, in this case, again, we've got the hose on one side. So we're going to number our test cock, one, two, three, four. We're going to go to test cock number four. We're going to slowly open it and establish flow. Now both of my checks are open and I've increased the pressure differential across check one, which means my relief valve should not go off when I start pulling my supply pressure on test cocks one and two. Leave that flowing. We're gonna to go to test cog one. We're gonna open and close it. Go to test cog two, open and close it. Test cog three, open and close it. And then close test cog four. All your valves start in the closed position. Make sure your bleed hose is secure. We're gonna take our high side hose, attach it to test cog number two. Low side hose is going to go to test cog number three. <clears throat> All right, we always start with our low side first, so we're going to open test cog number three. And then we're going to flush out that low side of the test kit, which is my low side bleed. So open that up and we're blowing out all the air. Okay, Air is compressible, water is not, so we want to get all the air out of the test kit. We're gonna leave that flowing because we're about to mess with supply again. We're do the same thing on the high side. So we're gonna slowly open test cock number two. All right, once it's open, then we're gonna open that high side bleed valve. So both sides are flowing, we're getting all the air out of it. Now we're gonna go backwards. We're gonna close the high side off first. That will set the high side pressure in the test kit. The needle will go all the way up. Once it does, then you can close off the low side bleed. Needle will come back down, settle in the middle somewhere. And then our last step of initial setup is close shut off valve number two. All right, shut off valve, test cock. Don't close test cock two, close the shut off valve. Okay, if you close test cock two, you're messing up your process. So close the shut off valve and observe the gauge. What we want right now is a steady needle. I don't care where it is, we're not gonna record the number because initial setup is not a test. So all we need to know is it's stable, tells me the check is holding, and I can start testing. If that needle is dropping right now, we've got problems from the beginning, and we probably won't be able to test. But right now it's holding at about 9.0, but we're not gonna record that, it's stable, so we're good to go. First test, relief valve opening point. So we're gonna make it dump. So we're gonna do that by mixing the high side onto the low side to raise the zone pressure. So you're gonna open your high side control valve, one full turn, nothing really happens. And then once you open that low side control valve, that needle will slowly start to drop. All right, and you have full control on how fast it drops. You want a nice slow drop and you're gonna observe the relief valve. So you can stick your hand under it, you can just watch it, whatever you wanna do. 
but as soon as it starts discharging, you'll look at the test kit, get your number, and that'll be it. There it is, 2.6. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna take a quick look. That's what it should look like. Drip, drip, drip. It should not be more than that. All right, I'll show you why in a second. So we opened at a 2.6. You keep going and open it too much. Oops, your back flow's failing, ma'am. No, your procedure is wrong. So that's not what it should look like. So you want to open it just enough to get that nice, slow, steady drop, and then just leave it. You don't have to keep opening it. And you're waiting for that zone pressure to come up, and at some point it will push open the relief valve nice and slow and give you a steady drip. All right, once you get that number, you want to get it with that, with that um, low side open because that will give you an accurate number because when you close it, it starts to come back up. <clears throat> so get the number. Once you do, close the low side, leave the high side open, and record your number. 2.6. Minimum passing on that is a 2, so it passed the test. All right, second test is back pressure on check valve number 2. Everyone say back pressure means bypass hose. Back pressure means bypass hose. Right. Nine years I've been doing this. Word association, you got a lot to memorize, okay? Everyone remembers the first step. It's when you get to the second test and the third test, you're like, uh, what, what am I supposed to do? When you see the word back pressure, bypass. You're going to create a bypass. What's this full of right now? Air. Air. I don't want to shove a bunch of air into the assembly, so the first thing we're going to do is flush it out. High side is open, so when you open your bypass valve, we're showing that high side water is available and we're going to blow out the air. So, needle's gonna move, don't worry about it. We're gonna reset it. Flush it out, and then we're gonna put it on test cock number four. So that doesn't need to be a wet connection, just needs no to be wet flushed. Connection. Okay. Just flush it out, get the air out, close it up, put it on. Once you put it on, you're gonna open test cock four. Needle should not move. Uh, we're gonna reset that right now, okay. because right now it's stopped right here. Okay. Okay, so flush it, put it on, open the test cock. Now we gotta reestablish that zone. I'm gonna bring it back to where it was at the beginning. So we're gonna, we need, uh, water to come out of the zone that is connected to your low side bleed. So open the low side bleed, needle comes all the way up, great, close it, that resets that zone, so I'm back at that 9.2 right now. Once it's steady, now I can apply the back pressure and see if it gets past the check. So to do that, everything is open between here and here except my bypass valve. So once I open that, give it a good couple of turns, I'm now applying on my higher supply pressure behind the check. My needle is not dropping, so it tells me it's stopping right there at the check. It's not, not getting past the check, so the check is not leaking. So it's closed tight. So I'll check that box for closed tight. If the needle was dropping, it's telling me the check is leaking. All right, we're going to leave the bypass valve open. All right, again, these are all connected, so just leave that open. Next test, check valve number one. You need to know the drop across the check, which is measuring the spring on check one. All right, simple test. All we gotta do is reestablish the zone again. We already did it, we're gonna do it again. Got your low side bleed, open, needle comes up, close it, reset the pressure, and once it's stable, record the number. On back at that 9.2, we'll record there. Passing value for that has to be three above my relief valve. My relief valve is 2.6, my minimum is a 5.6, I'm at 9.2, it passes. All right, next test, we're gonna test, test our shutoff valve. Shutoff valve number two. All right, to test shutoff two, grab your screwdriver and just shut off test cock two. Watch the gauge. If it's not dropping, it's not leaking, okay? If it is dropping, then it tells you that's in a leaking condition. But close the test cock, watch the gauge, that's it. Don't reset the zone, don't turn anything else. All you're gonna do is close off the supply. That traps that high pressure water in the test kit and in the area between the check and the shutoffs. I've already tested the check against back pressure and it passed, so if I have my needles dropping, it's got to be going through the shutoff valve. All right, check my box for closed tight on that one. Now I'm down to my last test. All right, <clears throat> this is called the bunny hop. So we're going to go from either side of check one to either side of check two. So we're just going to move our hoses down. So, close all your test cocks. It's not in the test procedure, but five valve test kit, if you want, go ahead and open your bleeds right now. Bleed off the pressure, that way when you take the hoses up, they don't spray everywhere. All right, now we're gonna do this in a particular way so that you don't switch your hoses. So, take the bypass off, lay it to the side, and then we're just gonna bunny hop our hoses down. Low side's gonna go to four, and the high side's gonna go to three. 
The official procedure will say, remove all your hoses. Well, we are removing them in a particular way so that I don't accidentally switch my hoses for my last test. As I told you in class, what happens if you load it backwards? It stays on zero, it doesn't work, okay? So, uh, move them down, high side on three, low side on four. Make sure all our valves are closed to begin. This is gonna be very much like initial setup. We're just gonna blow out both sides of the test kit, set the pressures, the needle will tell me what is the difference in pressure. Always start low side first, we're at open test cock four. And we're past the relief valve, so it says open test cock three. Low side first on the bleed, so open your low side bleed, get it flowing. Here out of there. High side bleed open, then we go backwards. Close your high side bleed, let the needle climb. Usually it doesn't go to the very top of the scale, that's fine, just give it time to come up. Once you've done that, close your low side bleed. Number stop at 1.6. It's over one, so it so passes. One or higher and it passes, so record your number, 1.6. If it was less, you still record the number, but when you go to evaluate it, it failed because it didn't meet the minimum. <coughs> if the needle is dropping, it tells you the check is leaking. Okay, but we're solid there, we got a good number. I actually passed all five tests so I can pass the assembly. But your job is not done until you can go home unless you want to give them that test kit. So, tear down procedures. Close your test box. If you want, you may open your bleeds. Bleed off the pressure. Remove your hoses. Open your shutoff valve and drain out the test kit. Just open up all your valves and drain it all out. Do not store your test kit with water in it. You've gone through all five tests, it passed, evaluation is over. You review the numbers, make sure it passed every test. If it did, pass it. If it fails one test, it's a failing assembly.